been working on transit on projects since 1985 and really involved with it for 35 years. I meet Maria Cortez at a bus stop in City Heights. She's lived in this neighborhood for more than 40 years. We are on the corner of um, University and Marlboro, and the 7 runs quite frequently here. Cortez rides the bus almost every day. She says transit in City Heights is a lot better than it used to be. This neighborhood has a relatively low rate of car ownership, which is one reason why the bus routes serving City Heights are so successful. A lot of people depend on them. To us, it shows that MTS is caring about what, what happens to us here in City Heights. Under MTS's transit optimization plan, several bus routes serving City Heights and the greater mid-city area are getting more frequent service. Some routes are also being shortened or split into two segments, so delays don't happen as often. Cortez says she's thrilled. Thank God MTS is finally listening to us. For years, we have been on MTS to um, increase transportation here. Um, and not only just here, but throughout San Diego, period. And with the transit coming in, with the um, increase in the transit, that's going to be great. I think it's awesome, and we need to start somewhere, so why not here? Of course, new bus services aren't free. To help pay for the increased frequency, MTS is planning cuts to other routes that are less popular. One of them is Bus 83, which connects downtown with Mission Hills. The route has seen its ridership plummet in the past decade. Much of its route now serves a low-density neighborhood with homes worth more than a million dollars. Still, some advocates say the bus's remaining riders depend on it. Anytime you take away service, there's some people that are impacted. Paul Jablonski is the CEO of MTS. We understand that. We care about that. That's why we outreach. That's why we listen. That's why we go through great lengths to try to do compromises where we can still keep it. With fewer people riding transit, MTS is getting less revenue from passenger fares. Jablonski says he saw two options for getting out of the resulting budget deficit, cutting services or trying to grow out of the problem. With our clientele, I'm, I always want to do fare increases as the last resort. I want to keep transit a good value for people, and I want it, but I want it to be productive and, and to make sure that we can never be accused of running around empty buses, okay? And so this was a look at that. Beyond just cutting less productive services, MTS also plans on using funds from the state gas tax increase to fund the transit plan. That money might not last long. There's a campaign to repeal the gas tax increase. Still, with growing ridership as the end goal, Jablonski says this is the right thing to do. It is a little bit more of a gamble, but, you know, it's the old adage. Sometimes you have to spend money to make money. And, and with us, it is about making money because we, have, we only have so much to spend and we want to maximize service. Maria Cortez acknowledges the added service in City Heights partly comes at the expense of less popular bus routes. You know, I live here in City Heights, but I also care about what happens in San Diego. Um, because what affects one community, it affects us all. But if there's not that many people that are riding the, the bus, then they do need to increase more frequency in the others where, like with us here, we are riding the bus a lot and we have a lot of ridership. The MTS Board of Directors will decide whether to approve MTS's plans Thursday morning. Andrew Bowen, KPBS News.